Our second player for today is Combank Matilda's cap number 169 and also Queenslander Ivy Lewick. We'll get started with some questions. With the video about the FIFA prize money, what's the reaction that you've gotten as you've been hearing from players or people? What have you gotten uh, from that video, the reaction? Um, to be honest, I'm not too much on social media right now, so I'm keeping away from it. But um, you know, just from talks with with girls as it is doing what we do. Um, of course, it would be great for all of us, you know, to be paid equal prize money as the men. I think we're a little bit of a ways off it, but um, definitely be nice to see. Next question, just down there. Ivy, you're one of the more experienced heads in the team. How how are you managing the? I'm assuming it's the leaders in the team as well, managing the the perfect balance between taking um, the pressure of, and then also taking the support of the ca the country and kind of finding the perfect balance of that into Thursday night and the rest of the tournament as well. Yeah, look, we've always been very focused on ourselves and trying to keep out the outside noise. So there's no difference right now. Um, if anything, it's more so in that regard. And we know that the country is behind us. Um, our fans are amazing. And we're just trying to take uh, those parts of the hype um, and then just shutting out the rest of it. Shutting that out must be difficult in your own circumstances there. I mean, your story is well known. And three years ago, you, you were retiring from international football, and now you're going to be playing in a World Cup in, in your home country and, and a game in your home state. Yeah, um, but it's not too hard for me, to be honest, because, like I said, I'm not on social media too much, and if I am, I'm not reading comments and that sort of thing. But, yeah, of course, there have been people that have reached out privately um, and, you know... It's been great to hear their support, and, and that's all awesome. And, yes, of course, it, it was a shock. You know, two years ago, I wouldn't have thought that I'd be sitting here today, but it's a complete blessing. Uh, none of us as youngsters could have imagined to be having a Home World Cup, and we're truly honoured, and we want to just take this opportunity and do the best with it as we can. And I'm no different in that regard. Um, yeah, it's just a real big blessing. Truly, when you're walk around and you see these things, it gives you little butterflies in your stomach, despite what you've been able to achieve in your career. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, if that's your question, it's this is probably the greatest, not probably, this is the greatest uh, achievement and opportunity of my career for sure. Uh, any player would dream about going to a World Cup um, and representing their country first and foremost, but to do both of those things on home soil, it's incredible. Like... It, it's not even a dream because, like, we wouldn't have dreamt it earlier. But now it's happening and it's just incredible. Ivy, this is obviously a, a new experience for you being involved with the World Cup, but for a lot of younger players, it is. Have any of those players spoken to you or any of the other senior members of the team about how to manage expectations and, and how to deal with, with pressures or, or nerves? Yeah, we've spoken about it a bit here and there, but actually we were um, really lucky... Uh, when we were still in Melbourne to have Cathy Freeman come in and talk with us. And obviously everyone knows she's one of the biggest Aussie sporting heroes. And, you know, we had a bit of a chat to her and talked about how she dealt with pressures because obviously she had the weight of the nation on her shoulders and she was just one and we're a whole team. So I think we're quite lucky in that regard that we have our friends and teammates there to support each other. And, you know, here and there you can have little chats um, with each other, but I think that chat and a big thanks to her and to the staff for organising it because uh, we came away from that feeling a little bit of a weight off our shoulders I think and just completely inspired you know. Does it make you feel like you guys can have your own special moment there's certainly plenty of home support and it comes with pressure as well and I guess what did you say about taking that moment? Yeah definitely and I think uh, it's it's important to not get ahead of yourself um, and that's why we're focused on the island game and just the island game and everything in the lead up has been towards that so staying in the moment is very very important so that's what we're trying to do. Tony uh, after the French game said that 
they're in the form of your life or your career. Do you feel that in Sweden? You're playing lots of minutes and, and having a, a great season, but do you feel that as well? Um, yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> those are nice words from him. Um, I, I think I've been playing quite well, yes. Um, we've done really well over there, but the players that I'm surrounded by at Hecken are incredible and they make it so easy to play well, just like these girls here. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. I feel in form, and, yeah, it's a, it's a nice feeling going into such a big tournament. Ivy, you've known Tamika for a long time. Um, how's she doing? Do you expect to see her against Ireland? <laughs> uh, as a lot of the girls have said previously, um, Meeks is concentrating on her individual plan on doing the best she can to make herself available and um, yeah that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Um, what else did Kathy say to you guys? Was it, um, was it kind of like an informal setting like where were you sitting in your room or something and um, just what were the circumstances and what else did she talk about? Yeah, well, we actually had um, a meeting scheduled at 6.30 and we thought, all right, you know, Tony and tactics, here we go. So we plotted all in there, sat down on our chairs and, you know, he mentioned that whilst these t types of tournaments require a lot of uh, tactics, it also requires a lot of belief and a lot of heart. And so that we were going to take a little bit of a, a turn and do something a bit different and... Um, they played about a three-minute highlight reel on YouTube of the moment of Kathy Freeman's race. And <laughs> by the end of it, there was a lot of emotion going around in the room. And when they turned the lights on, we turned around and there she was. So it was a huge surprise to us. Um, a lot of girls were very emotional, um, but it was an informal setting. She's such a down-to-earth girl. She's amazing. I still kind of can't believe that that happened because uh, a couple of years ago we were going through some questions uh, about who your sporting hero is and why and over half the team said that Kathy Freeman was their hero and I'd come to find out later that the staff kind of because of that tried to get her in and uh, bless her heart she came in she doesn't do a lot of public speaking but she did that for us and so big thank you to to Kathy and her family for doing that. But yeah, we just sat around and we asked her questions informally and and she spoke back to us just like a, like she was a friend. And yeah, we, we got a lot of good insight from that. Just over here, next question. Thank you. Um, can I just get your thoughts on this Irish team as well? I mean, they're very much the underdogs, I suppose, going into Thursday's game. Um, how, how do you view, view the game from an Australian point of view and the threat that the Irish might pose? Mm. Um, it's the first game of the World Cup, so that in itself is is huge. I think that Ireland, we know they're a very physical team and they have some good strong threats too. Um, the other thing is, it's their first time in a World Cup, so they're underdogs, but with that, I think there's no pressure on them, which can be really dangerous. Um, and it's our first, world, our first game, we want to do really well. Uh, we want to come out guns blazing and... Yeah, you know, we, we're just focused on our game plan and executing that well. And with the talent that we have, uh, we're confident that we can come through with a good result. Final two questions for Ivy. Yep. Sorry, I, I hate to go back there again, but we normally just like to keep the kind of line of questioning going with that when you're on a good run with something. But I just wanted to ask on the Kathy thing again. Mm -hmm. You kind of touched on it, but did she have something that she kind of, that just resonated with you that she said that might stick with you through the tournament? that she kind of said about delivering in the moment or a certain line that she said about what it is that you have to do to deliver in that moment or something like that? Yeah. Um, my takeaway from what she told us was that we know who we are. We know why we do this. And whilst we want to perform and give results for others outside the circle, at the end of the day, you believe in yourself and you do it for yourself all athletes do what they do because they love the sport. And so to not lose track of that, and, and that gives you the confidence to go out there and do your job. So that's what I took away from that. Final one over here. Um, I'll be on a, on a education on a light note. Um, I know most tournaments, teams have ways of bonding. They have, you know, for example, in, in the last 
World Cup theme and then we had a darts tournament every day. I know you're a bit of a ping pong master. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> Videos. Is that, um, is that anything that's been happening Social recently? Media, is that going to be something that you're going to get around with, with the rest of your team? Yeah, um, <laughs> we've got an amazing uh, player hangout room, if you want to call it that, in our hotel. And there's a lot of different options for different people to do, um, have a little creative session. We've got some drawing and colouring in for the, the youngsters. We've, there's a TV there, you know, we've got recovery stuff. And yes, there's a, a ping pong table and that has been getting some serious use lately. And uh, yeah, there'll definitely be tournaments throughout the World Cup. Oh yeah! Actually, I just found out Amy Fowler, uh, Amy Fowler, <laughs> Mary Fowler, the other day um, is very, very good. She's got a wicked forehand. Alex Chidiak obviously is very good. Um, Wheels is good. Actually, th there's quite a few and a couple of staff members too. Wheels is good when I'm not there. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Always manages to just shank it as soon as I get there. Yeah. Um, sorry, just one final question because I missed Marco in the corner. Um, sorry, Ivy, how do you see the uh, battle for the for the um, centre back roles with um, with Alana coming back the other night, with Claire with a foot, and you know, and, and young Claire, and and you being able to play a few spots. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't really see it so much of a, as a battle. I think. Uh, we all are different players in our own regard. I think Alana had a fantastic game the other night. Super happy for her. You know, she hasn't played in about eight months or so, but, you know, she was so composed. She was aggressive when she needed to be, and uh, that was against France, one of the best teams in the world. And Claire Hunt, you know, she's new to the team, but she's been performing really, really well. Pulse, we all know what she brings. And, yeah, so it's, it's great, I think... Um, we all support each other a lot and all of the different combinations I think work quite well too. So, you know, we're just there to do our best and, and give the team um, a solid back line. So, yeah. Fantastic. That concludes today's press conference activities. Thank you very much, Ivy. Thanks, guys.